good evening, everyone from the USA, Canada, all over the world, Long Island, plus the five spots of Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, Staten Island, and Queens. I'm your man, G Money Stacks, aka Lonely Nomad, aka the Greginator, aka the YouTuber, aka host with the most and rookie podcaster of Queens, New York. And you are now tuning in and rocking with Off the Meat Rack Chains New York Podcast, episode 86. And we have a great show for you today. Now, a round of applause for reaching 86. Now, if you are new to the channel and you are a new listener and a um, new watcher from the YouTube community universe and you miss any previous episodes whatsoever, don't worry. I got your back. All you need to do is go subscribe to the YouTube channel, G Money Stacks 555, where you can see the whole list of episodes already posted. Um. And make sure you go grab the, um, yeah, go grab the um, notification bell and be sure to enable alerts so you can be reminded of when the show goes in the air via live stream. Um, stay tuned for more video content, um, upcoming episodes, previous episodes. Uh, don't forget to share the videos. Um, tell a friend to another friend. Um, download your favorite episodes. And I will review um, the audio streaming platforms and and, uh, and an added edition streaming platform that I just got added on to. So stick around and you'll, you'll see what happens at the um, end of the show, all right? Now, um, yeah, I like to start this show. Okay, we're gonna start off with um a segment that I like to call chatting all the jazz. And you guys know what it is. It's basically a segment about. The trend, not only the trending topics, but it's a combination of, um, you know, serious and funny stories. In this case, um, we got some crazy serious topics to get to, um, some serious um stories to get to. We got two incidents that happened in Central Park. So let me make sure I'm not on mute. Yeah, so the first one has to do with um, what went down in Central Park. Um, so this is what the story um, goes. So a convicted sex criminal who was on the street for just two days after being sprung was busted Thursday for allegedly assaulting a woman on Randall's Island, sources say. What? Howard Shaw was released from state prison on Tuesday, allegedly attacked a 54-year-old jogger on Randall's Island around 7.45 a.m., according to police. The assault took place about 25 minutes after a 27-year-old woman was raped in Central Park while jogging and investigators were eyeing Shaw in that attack before identifying a different suspect. Police said Shaw, age 38, is in custody and still being questioned. End quote. He is under arrest, but we are still speaking to him. We are still conducting the investigation, so we don't want to jump the gun as yet, but he is in custody, NYPD Inspector Michael King said at the Thursday briefing. At this time, we'll just say 
that we have two separate sexual assaults, but we're not saying that the ammos are similar, King added. We're just saying we have two separate assaults and we're investigating both, but we're we are exploring all angles at this time. Um okay. Later Thursday after Shaw's arrest, um, the NYPD released a photo of an identified suspect that was wanted for questioning in Central Park rape. King said there will be increased patrols at Central Park after the attack. The first victim was jogging on Center Drive near Sean Lake when a man came up behind her, put her in a chokehold, causing her to lose conscious, police said. King said that the victim reached out to a passerby who assisted her. The second victim was jogging near the 103rd Street footbridge on East River Lane. When she was tackled by a man who tried to pull her pants down but was thwarted when a bystander called the police, um, Shaw was arrested at the scene, police said. The ex-con a registered sex offender has two prior arrests, a 2005 robbery, bus, and a rape the same year that sent him to the Green Haven Correction Facility until his release last month. In the earlier rape case, Shaw was convicted of attacking the raping a 25-year-old woman in Queens while she was taken out the trash. Um, she was throwing out the trash and he asked if she had time. A police source told the post. Um, he put one hand around her waist and the other over her mouth. Shaw then dragged the victim toward a stairwell where he choked and punched and raped her. The police said, um, police said in. NYPD Crime Stoppers van will be at the scene of, of the Central Park attack in an attempt to find witnesses. Okay. Here's what I what I'll actually um feel about that. And and this. And we have another incident in Central Park that we have to talk about here. Okay. So, the NYPD provided an update Thursday afternoon on two sexual assaults that happened earlier in the morning. The first took place in Central Park where a female jogger was allegedly knocked to the ground and attacked. An image of a suspect was later released. Um, the second incident reportedly happened not too long after uh, 103rd Street near the FDR Drive, CBS 2's Alice Gaynor reported. Police said it, it does not appear that the attacks are related. Um, at this time, we would just say that the, that we have two separate sexual assaults, but we're not saying that the ammos are similar. No, we're just saying we're have we have two separate assaults and we are investigating both um but we are exploring all angles at the time um let's see um police spent the day along a tape off path close to the pond Pond and Central Park South, not far from Busy Center Drive and the Woolman Rink, searching for evidence. It's it's where a woman in her 20s was jogging at around 7.20 a.m. Police said she was knocked to the ground, choked, and then sexual, sexually assaulted, briefly losing consciousness. <sighs> The victim was able to leave the area and flag some people down to call 911. She was taken to a local hospital. About 45 minutes after the Central Park attack, there was another report of a sexual assault near the FDR. Sources said 38-year-old Howard Shaw was arrested. He has two prior arrests for rape and robbery and was just released two days ago. 
police were checking for video related to two part no excuse me two attacks there are cameras around the border of central park the nypd put up posters in the area of the park where the attack happened and search for tips as people continue jogging and walking nearby um cbs2 spoke to alarm women who frequent who frequent the park um I was just walking through this way yesterday, shooting cam- shooting pictures of birds, Karen Katie said. It's very shocking that it happened here. You would think that in the morning you would be safer when it's daylight, another woman said. I wish I could go wherever in the park that I wanted, but clearly you can't, jogger, Mary Nink said. <sighs> Man. That's horrible and terrifying. It definitely does make me think twice about coming in here when I'm not surrounded by a lot of other people. But then again, it's New York and scary things. um, You are always hearing about scary things happening, hand attacks at it. Hold on, before I continue, man, um, I mean, let me just say this though, man. I have to agree with this woman because, you know, sometimes scary shit happens in New York and it's not just at nighttime. Sometimes it's always in the daytime. And, you know, as I previously talked about episodes ago, that's why I don't really go out like that because it's always going to be idiots who are trying to ruin the fun. And to me, when idiots try to ruin the fun for people who are jogging in the, in, in Central Park out of all places or any other park whatsoever, it's like you, you, you're trying to ruin it for everybody, and that's not right. Man. And, 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 and another thing, the, the idiot that just got, that just got released... You have to be the stupidest motherfucker to ever do some shit like that. And that is not okay to be to be raping a woman and, and doing doing ridiculous crazy ass fuck shit. I mean, come on. Why what tip why would you try to why would you try to pull down a woman's pants? Are you are you really that are you really that desperate? Are you really that desperate to talk to that woman? Like, come on, son. Man. You know what? I know there's more to this story, but let me just continue reading. Um, Rapes in New York City are up 2.5% since last year. At this time in 2020, there have been two rapes in Central Park. This year, there there have been six cbs 2's corey james reported it's hard it's a hard reality for those who enjoy taking in the popular spot which had an increased police presence as investigators work throughout the night the only reason i'm here is because there's a lot of other people here said roseanne panoia of the upper west side Stay away from dark places. Stay where it's populated, added Joseph um, Asabe of Hell's Kitchen. Police said they'll be out Friday morning at around the same time of Thursday's crime to f- try to further the investigation. Oh, oh gosh. Like, really? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we got a guest in the building, man. What's your name? Where are you from? Yeah, how you? Yeah, how you doing, man? Welcome to the live stream. I'm recording um a podcast right. Now. I'm recording a podcast right now. I'm from Queens, New York. How's the weather over there? How's the weather over there where you are? I know, I know, but what's the weather like in Africa? 
motherfucker, it's like fucking hot dog. We like people are burning up in here, up in here. <laughs> hot, 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 hot. Oh man. So How's so the weather in America. Well, in New York it's starting to get cold. Is it? Is it snowing now? Mm, no, it's not. We're still in November. I mean, everybody's oh, everybody's man. doing Christmas. Everybody's doing Christmas shopping right now, so <laughs> well, you get oh, the gist. You know, like you see, you see in Africa, right? Because we so poor here, people don't shop around like that shit. Like we just sitting around and just trying to get something to eat, and mm. you know, until that day before before Christmas, then we start saying, "Oh shit, yes, it's Christmas!" Yeah, mm. you guys start to celebrate it in November. In yeah, November, you like it. I mean, you like it. Yeah, but that's good. That's good, you know. Yeah, I hear you, Jimmy. So, how, so how do you guys? Yeah, so, so how do you guys cool off when it's hot? Man, we just like used to this shit, dog. We just like be Jimmy. We be <laughs> really. We don't give a fuck. Ah. Uh... Yeah, because of the vitamin. Yeah, because of the vitamin D. I get you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and you know the sun. I mean, it, it's like because as as human beings, we always radiating mm-hmm. energy. So you know, yeah, the sun when it hits us, to you know, because of the dark skin shit. So we the melanin and then so we feeding from the sun. The sun is good for us. So yeah. The sun is the best thing ever. I uh, hear yeah. So, what type of what type like, of music? Like, what do you do? You sound like a rapper. Do you rap? Huh? What do you, you say? What do you do? Do you rap? What do you do? What do I do? I'm saying you sound like a rapper. Do you rap? Yeah. No, actually, I am a host of a show that I'm doing right now called Off the Meat Rack Chains New York Podcast, episode 86. I was just talking about the the crazy incidents that happened in Central Park, which kind of really struck me. Kind of got me a little angry and stuff. It's like, what type of it's like, it's like, what type of guy would actually do harmful shit to women, like rape them and try to pull their pants down? What? Yeah, what? I was just reading it just now. Off. It was it's crazy. It's man. So what was he arrested or something? Well, yeah. Fuck, they need to like. And the crazy part, and the crazy part is he just got out of out of prison two days ago. Oh, oh this guy maybe that's why. But he can. He, I mean, why can't he go to his joint and just pay someone? And, and, and get your groove on. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you man. Don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to be, 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 be vandalizing women and raping women. You can just, um, you know, go to the strip joint and, you know, pay someone, get something done. I mean, it's, it, that's why they put these things there. I mean, a lot of strip clubs and uh, there's some strip clubs that actually closed down because of the pandemic. Oh, so so there's only a few now, so you don't get a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, so- I, I, no, it's all good. Yeah, but it's all good, man. It's all good. But you know what, though? Like speaking of which, um. What type of music are you into? Like, which music artists do you listen to? Man, I, right now, I'm listening to some 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 house. I listen to rap, dog. I listen to all type of music, man. I'm, you know, I'm a dancer. You know, I dance. I do hip hop. I do contemporary. I do African dance. So wow. I hear. Um. Yeah, um, we had a guest. Um, I don't know what happened, but um, 
but I appreciate him from all uh, for um for being for being on the live stream. But um we got a show to actually continue. So let me go to the next topic here. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute here. I don't know who it is. Um anyway, um anyway, gotta um gotta move on from this. Um let me see. Oh, okay. All right. Um, we need to talk about the the whole um shortages of the firefighters. All right. This is crazy. When I heard this shit, I think this shit is over the whole vac- vaccine mandate and stuff. But guys, come on. Like, like. Like, be realistic here. Like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, you mean to tell me that you want to actually believe, you know, conspiracy theorists who make up phony baloney ass stories to make claims that, you know, vaccines kill people? Like, come on. Like, let me let me just say this though, man, before I even get into the firefighter story, because this, I'm I'm getting tired of conspiracy theories. Okay, this is getting on my nerves right now. All right, I'm not I'm not having this because this is crazy. You have people that die from diseases, alcoholism, drugs, and 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 and, and not to mention um car accidents and and stuff more than a vaccine. Like, cut it out with the fucking phony baloney bullshit of, of, of claims that vaccines kill people. Cut it out already, man. You're playing a dangerous game of Russian roulette with people's lives. If you don't have the right information, don't bother talking about it, man. Period. Anyway. So... Here's the story about what's going on with the firefighter situation here. New York City is suffering from a shortage of firefighters and EMS personnel on the eve of the November 1st deadline, which requires city workers have at least one dosage of a COVID vaccine, according to reports. A report from the New York Post said 26 companies of the New York City Fire Department citywide were shuttered on Saturday as a result of the city's vaccine mandate, per city's official. As of 7.30 a.m. this morning, 26 um, FDNY companies are closed, including five in my district, due to um, NYC mayor um, locking out um, unvaccinated um, firefighters. Nicole um, Miliotakis um, from from Brooklyn tweeted on October 30th, if someone dies due to a slower emergency response, it's on Bill de Blasio and his overre- overreaching mandates. I hope this fool fixes, fixes it ASAP. Um, as of 7.30 a.m. this morning, of course, um, 26 FDNY um companies are closed including five in my district due to um nyc mayor locking out unvaccinated firefighters yeah i already read that part the excessive sick leave by a group of our firefighters because of the their anger at the vaccine mandate for all city employees is unacceptable contrary to um their oaths to serve and may endanger the lives of New Yorkers. Um, FDNY Commissioner um, Dan- Daniel A. Negro, <laughs> oh shit, said, according to an October tweet from writer Ginger Adams Otis, firefighter f- foot um, shortage has affected the entire city and is not isolated to one borough or neighborhood the new york post reported um no borough or neighborhood was spared with the shuttered companies ranging from engine um 
Engine Company 55 in Lower Manhattan to Engine, engine Company 234 in Crown Heights to Engine two to Engine um, Company 231 in Brownsville. Others included Ladder um, Company 128 in Long Island City, Queens, and Engine Company 158 and Ladder um, Company 78 on Staten Island. According to information provided by um, Mila Takalis um, and Councilman Joe Borelli, who cited the un the Uniformed Firefighters Association. Borelli said the list of 26 came from a FDNY alert dispatch to members. <sighs> October 30th, um, company closures reported by the Post accounted for 7.6% of the city's um, 341 and ladder companies. According to the, to the outlet, Councilman Borelli called the number un, unconscionable and added, in quote, the firefighters who are able to work have all been tested within the week and are not COVID positive. And I doubt New Yorkers care about the vaccine status of the person applying um, defibrillators to their chest, according to the outlet. Um, Negro refuted Melio Takis' um, claim, the near, the near Daily News reported. Firefighter, um, no, excuse me, Fire Commissioner Daniel Negro <laughs> denied a claim from Representative Nicole Melio Takis <laughs> um, from Staten Island that 26 FDNY companies were closed Saturday because vaccine protesting firefighters are calling in sick. Several fire houses, Milio Takis, and union officials claim were closed and Brooklyn were open when daily news reporters visited. Among them were Engine 231 um, slash Ladder 120 in Brownsville, Brooklyn, Engine 323 in Flatlands and Engine 234 in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. When the news contacted two other firehouses, Melio Takis and union officials said were closed, they were open and operating, although short staffed. According to according to the post. FDNY spokesperson Jim Long said the situation is not permanent and labeled the companies as temporarily out of service. The situation remains fluid. Long said we hire manpower to get the company back in service or relocate other units to the area for coverage. NYPD's emergency service unit has called upon firefighters from upstate New York and Long Island to fill empty positions, the Post reported. The one man lives across the street from Engine Company 284 in Dyker Heights, Brooklyn, which was offline on October 30th, according to the Post. The 63-year-old resident named Vinny Agro uh, said, we're fucked. We are going to toast like marshmallows <laughs> oh wow the post reported it's another sad day for new york city most of the houses are semi-attached frame houses you throw a match on it and it goes up real quick he added per the post you need a quick response it's scary of FDNY firefighters, the vaccination rate registered at 72% at the end of the day, October 29th, and almost 4,000 firefighters remain unvaccinated, according to the Post. One Brooklyn precinct took more than two hours to respond to calls Friday night, according to the Post. The 77 precinct in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, was slow to respond to calls Friday night as four officers on the 4 p.m. to midnight shift called in sick, sources said. Um, the, the outlets wrote, 
call logs um, showed response times of more than two hours in some cases. Um, early Saturday morning, a young boy died in Washington Heights fire, and his grandmother was significantly injured. Fox News reported Robert Resto, age seven, died after a fire broke out in the building superintendent's basement apartment. Um, uh, man. Firefighters responded to the call at 1.30 a.m. and were reported not effectively by the shortages of the firefighters as they reportedly arrived on the scene in four minutes. Fox News reported citing the NYD and article. <sighs> okay. The Daily News reported that upwards of 36 ambulances were out of commission on October 30th as a result of vaccine-related circumstances. FDNY officials stated that a large number of paramedics, um, emergency medical technicians were experiencing vaccine side effects from their initial initial coronavirus shots and called in sick on Saturday. <sighs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Town Hall officials said as of Tuesday, October 26, just 61% of EMS workers were vaccinated, but the number climbed substantially to 84% by 8 p.m. on Friday, according to the Daily News. Look, man, I'm going to tell you something right now, man. I am going to tell you something right now. Don't you get tired of the same excuses that some individuals make to not care about other people around them? And as far as like, you know, you know, the, the firefighter shortages and stuff like that, I do. I do feel for the people who are short staffed and and that's and to, to be quite frank, it's it's crazy. It's like you're using stupid politics as you using stop using politics as an excuse to to justify the stunt that you pulled to actually take a damn day off when you got a bunch of people who are who are basically in a line of in a line of fire in danger, but you want to put their lives over your own personal bullshit beliefs. Like, shame on you. For real, though, shame on you. All right. Um, let me see. Let me move on to the damn next topic here. <laughs> okay, so we got another crazy ass incident. And this is involving Tiger. All right. Now, of course, Tiger arrested for felony domestic violence. Of course, bail set at 50 grand. Are you serious? Uh, so 9.40 a.m., Tiger's rep, Jack um, Cassoni of EMC Bowery, tells TMZ the allegations you have been reading about our client the past few days are false and will be disproven. Tiger just bailed out and but remained silent on his way out of the police station. Law enforcement sources tells us Tiger has been arrested for felony domestic violence his bail has been set at 50 grand tiger is voluntarily turning himself into lapd to face allegation he got physical with his ex-girlfriend who posted images of her alleged injuries and were told it's possible he could be hit with a felony
TMZ brought the story the rapper was planning to have a sit down with cops Tuesday morning to explain his side of the story after at the Cameron Swanson accused him of roughing her up during an early Monday morning dispute at his house. We're told Tigers decided to turn himself in and it and a charge of felony domestic violence is on the table. We got Tiger who wasn't willing to chat on his way inside the station. He refused to answer any questions about what happened. As we reported, sources close to Tiger say um, Cameron um, showed up at his house around 3 a.m. and started acting belligerent at the door. We're told Tiger let her inside and the yelling continued. Um, as for what happened next, um, Cameron claims he hit her and says she has bruises to prove it. While also she also saying she's prepared to stand up for herself. The cops also saw what she's showing off. Apparent apparent visible marks on her face, and they took a report over it. Officers tried to talk to Tiger at his house on Monday, but he refused. Um, now, though, he's facing the music and might end up having to answer for this in court. Oh, boy. Okay, this is another example of stupid people. And I just talked about the whole Central Park shit, man, with the with the idiot who tried to pull a woman's pants down and and tried to rape her. Like, what kind of guy does that shit? Like, yo, shame on you, man, for making for making you know black guys look bad, man. You making the good guys look bad. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man, really? Are you really that stupid? Like, for real, though. <laughs> for real, though, man. Hold on. Yeah. Um. Okay. Now that I got that out the way, let's go to... Okay. So, I hear about The Rock who's trying to start a rap career. So, let's go to the story about Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, of course, who... <laughs> this is interesting. I mean, listen. I mean, we gotta lighten shit up, though, man. But hold on. Uh, let me get a drink, man. After this damn frustration. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Um, okay. All right. So Dwayne Johnson, right? <laughs> he made his rap debut. Dwayne the Rod Johnson makes his historic rap debut in Tech Nine's Face Off. <laughs> wow. Okay, so Dwayne Rod Johnson became famous as a wrestler and an actor. Um, now he's adding rap, rapper to his resume. The 49-year-old actor made what he calls his historic rap debut with a feature in Tech Nine's song Face Off, released Friday. The song, which also <laughs> features rappers Joey Cool and King Izzo. It's part of the Kansas City City Rappers' newest album. <laughs> As <in nine. laughs> oh shit! As a nine. Oh man. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Made my historic rap debut. Thankfully, I didn't suck. Huge shout to. All the hip hop and music fans for your hype reactions on um, Johnson tweeted Friday. <sighs> Johnson lays down the last verse of Face Off rapping about drive and power. We stay hungry, we devour, 
put in the work, put in the hours, and take what's ours. Black and Samoan in my veins. My culture banging with strange. He raps referring to Tech Nine's record label Strange Music Incorporated. In an interview with Variety published Friday, Johnson said he doesn't see a long-time career in rap, but would think about giving it another go in the future. Um, end quote. Um, I would love to do a, re a repeat with Tech 9 and Strange Music. If I had the opportunity to collab collaborate with another artist out there, hip-hop artist, blues artist, outlaw country artist, then let's talk and let's figure it out, Johnson said. If I could rap about the right words that feel real and authentic to me, then I'll be happy to break out that um terramena. Take a few big swings and jump back into the studio. Johnson mentioned taking swing of terramena. The actor's tequila brand he founded in 2020, which has been a practice of the actor when he sang in M Moana. I go through the vocal ranges and I take one little sip of what's that stuff. Oh, tequila. He told USA Today in 2016. When asked how he, he prepares for his singing um, numbers in the Disney film. Um, thank you to my brother, the goat, um, the real tech nine for coming up with the, this big, crazy idea of wanting me to drop some rock gasoline <laughs> bars. <laughs> oh man. Rap gasoline bars. <laughs> oh shit. On the fire. Johnson wrote on Instagram in an Instagram video with a clip of his verse. Oh boy. Okay, it was a good try though, man. But you know what though, man? Age 49. Listen, I'm not knocking the guy for trying, but um if you say it's temporary, then it's temporary. I don't think he's going to be doing that too much. But whatever he decides, good luck to him. Anyway, so. Um, so let's talk. Um, let's talk Will Smith, man. All right. Um, so Will Smith reveals that he once considered suicide in the trailer for health docuseries, The Best Shape of My Life. Um, let's see. Um, let me see. Let me see. Will Smith got ca candid about his mental health journey, revealing that he once contemplated suicide the aladdin actor shared the trailer for his upcoming youtube docuseries titled the best shape of my life which follows smith as he attempts to lose 201 pounds no 20 pounds excuse me in 20 weeks while finishing his first memoir oh the dad bot <laughs> oh shit oh wow um when I started this show, I thought I was getting into the best shape of my life physically. Smith at Smith, age 53, said. Um, but mentally, I was somewhere else, he says in the trailer. And I ended up discovering a whole lot of hidden things about myself. Smith added that writing his memoir felt like exposing my life and so many things that people don't know about me. Um... The trailer then cuts to Smith sitting beside his family members, including three children, Trey, 28, Jaden, 23, Willow, 20, as he reflected on previous suicidal thoughts. 
that was the only time in my life that I ever considered suicide, Smith said. It's unclear what specific period in his life was referring to in the trailer. The trailer continued with Smith reading an excerpt from his memoir. Um, in quote, what you've come to understand as Will Smith, the alien annihilating MC bigger than life movie star is largely a construction, a carefully crafted and Han character designed to protect myself, to hide myself from the world, to hide the coward, Smith said. Hmm. Smith can be seen wiping away tears as his family watched on in the trailer. The best shape of my life is scheduled to debut on November 8th. Of course, um, YouTube, um, Smith has been open with fans about his health journey by sharing updates with his um, 55.6 million followers on Instagram. In May, Smith told his Instagram followers that he planned to begin a regimen after gaining weight during the pandemic. He also announced he would um, be teaming up with YouTube to film the process. Smith recently shared a video of him exercising that gained more than 646,800 likes. Mm. Smith has also been busy with his acting career. He would play Richard Williams, the father of the tennis champions, Venus and Serena Williams, in an upcoming film, King Richard. The Smith and his wife, Jada Pickett Smith, have recently made headlines for being outspoken about their marriage. In September, he revealed at one point in their marriage, they decided against practicing monogamy. Um, Pickett Smith said that it's sometimes uncomfortable and hard to maintain a healthy sex life with Smith in a new episode of Red Table Talk. She later clarified that they've never had issues in the bedroom. If you or someone you know is struggling with de depression or has had thoughts of harming themselves or taking their own life, get help. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 1-800-273-8255. Um, provides 24-7 free confidential support for people in distress, as well as best practices for professionals and resources to aid in prevention and crisis situations. Okay. This is an interesting story right here, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I never, you know, um, hold on. You know, I never really thought that it was going to be, um, I never really Never really thought that um that he would actually talk about this. I mean, be open about it and stuff. I mean, I mean that's what a brave a brave person is supposed to do. If you're going through something um, mentally, physically, spiritually, and stuff like that, and you know you're not feeling right, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of feel him on that one, though, man. You know what I'm saying? And and you know what? Like I always say at the like I always say, man. Um, I'm always gonna say this at at the, the end of the show in every episode, so you will know what I'm gonna talk about. So we got other Will Smith news to talk about here. Um, and this one. This one has to do with him. This has to do with Will Smith climbing to the top of Bur Burj Khalifa. Now, hold on a second. <laughs> so, so the after scale, the building stairs and then some. Oh boy. So, let's take a look at let's take a look at this story, man. Um. So, Will Smith was photographed at the top of the spire of the Burj Khalifa, world's tallest building. Um, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai is the world's tallest building standing 
160 stories. <laughs> the buildings spire along with Dubai skyscraper skyline, often peaks above the clouds. So photographs of the movie star Will Smith sitting atop the building may look may look fake, but they are not. Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty interesting to say. Um the Independence Day star did climb to the very top of the Burj Khalifa. He did it as part of his new YouTube original series, Best Shape of My Life, in which Smith strives to as the title states, get back into shape after gaining weight during the COVID-19 pandemic. During the show, Smith scaled all 2,909 of the skyscraper's steps, and then some. After climbing the stairs, Smith decided he wanted to get to the very top of the building. It's Spire. Um, to do that, he had to climb additional stairs. No, excuse me, additional ladders. Mm. In June 2021, a photograph of Tom Cruise sitting atop the the Burj Khalifa's spire also went viral. The picture was taken in 2011 during the filming of the fourth installment of the Mission Impossible film series. Hmm. Um. Wow. Wow. You know, it's nothing wrong with challenging yourself, though, man. Especially if you're doing your best for your health. I have to really com- I have to really commend him on that one, man. Yes. <laughs> yes, man. That's very 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 um powerful. And the trailer for The Best Shape of My Life is on YouTube. You guys are more welcome to actually go check that out. Um, Let me see. What else, man? What else can I talk about here? I forget. Um, So, let me see. Let me see. I think, yeah, of course, um... Yes, of course. Of course, Will Smith did some interviews in regards to the King Richard movie. I actually saw the trailer of it. It looks pretty interesting and stuff. Um, Let me just put myself back on the uh, thing. Yes, I did see the trailer for King Richard. It's, it looks very interesting to watch. And I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of people are going to really check it out, though. So. You know, I'm not going to give away any spoilers or anything like that, though, man. You guys are more than welcome to actually check out the trailer um, for yourself on YouTube and and anywhere else. All right. So here we go. Um, all right. Um, we are going to. Oh, we are going to talk about the reboot of the game. OK. And there's one person, there is one person who's not in the reboot. <laughs> and you want to know who that person is? Well, you're going to find out as I go on to this article. All right. Distractify. Um, so the game is getting the reboot treatment at Paramount Plus. Will players change? Okay. It has been six years since we saw the, the series finale of the game. And what a finale it was. We witnessed an accidental shooting, the birth of twins, and a confu- confusing arrival in Las Vegas for one character. Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But what happened on BET is now on Paramount+. Plus. That's right. A reboot of the game is landing on Paramount+. Plus. And the only thing we need to know is who will be in it. Okay. 
who will be in the reboot of the game. We have good news and bad news. The good news is we're definitely going to see footballer um, Malik Wright played by Jose, Jose Sanchez, the sports agent, Tasha Mack, Wendy Raquel Robertson again, plus a few more original cast members will be popping by, such as Kelly Pitts, Brittany Daniel, and Jason Pitts, who's also Jason Pitts, Kobe Bell, who's also in the TV series Walker. Now for the bad news, as of now, we will not be seeing Melanie Barnett, Tia Maori for the revival. Let me explain something here. Okay. The purpose of a reboot, of course you're going to have the same people, right? But also you're going to have different people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But who but but who says that a reboot of the game, which I which I actually used to watch actually was going to be um you know considered it's not a bad show, man. Like come on. Wait, sometimes, sometimes reboots are good and sometimes they're not. Wait, let's be let's be crispy clear here. Some people were saying that it wouldn't be the same without um Tia Mari um as Melanie. Because what happened is because she's doing another show right now. I forget the name of it though, but I'm not gonna get into that right there. Um so Anyway, um, when asked about not returning to the show, Tia told Entertainment Tonight, you know what's so funny, never say never. I mean, as it stands for right now, we aren't in any talks or communication about me coming back to the show. I know it seems kind of weird because I'm like the only one. It's definitely, definitely weird. As far as the news new faces go we can expect to see annalisa um velez sneaky pete <laughs> wait wait, wait, wait hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up sneaky pete <laughs> sneaky pete oh shit <laughs> Oh shit, that's funny, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. <laughs> Sneaky Pete. As Raquel Navarro, best friend of Brittany Pitts, who is played by Adrian Ray from Chicago Fire. Brittany is Kelly and Jason's daughter, of course. What's a football show without a star player. And to Toby Sanderman, the Royals, as Garrett Evans, the hot new guy on the team. According to a press release, the goal of the reboot is to offer a modern-day examination of black culture through the prism of pro football. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um... How did the original come about? Um, the game was a spin off was a 2006 spin-off of the then popular Girlfriends, which starred Jill Marie Jones, Persia White, Gordon Brooks, and Tracy Ellis Ross. The backdoor pilot episode that launched the show was about Melanie Barnett, who was cousins with Tracy Ellis Ross's character, Joan. Um <clears throat> Melanie was in medical school, but decided to put it on hold to follow her boyfriend, who was recently drafted to the NFL. The show was really quite a fighter. Originally, um, starting out on the CW as the only new sitcom in a primetime slot. Unfortunately, the CW canceled it in 2009 after only three seasons, but it was immediately picked up by BET, where it stayed for six more seasons. Um, the show is not without its own behind-the-scenes drama. In 2007, CBS, the CW, Warner Brothers, and the 
Gramit Production Studio were sued by writer Stacy Robertson for forty million dollars. Whoa, whoa, forty million dollars. In the lawsuit, Stacy claimed she applied for and did not take a job as a writer's assistant to show cre- creator Mara brought a kill. Um, Stacy secured the interview after sending Mara a copy of her book, Interceptions. Stacy's book is based on her own life when she was a girlfriend of a professional football player in the 90s. The book is about a law student who decides to forego her career as a lawyer to join the fancy, the fancy but devastating world of NFL players and their fans. This does sound vaguely familiar. The lawsuit was settled out of court. I'm very pleased with the settlement, Stacy told the Marin Independent Journal. Looks like this snafu didn't hurt the show too much because the reboot is upon us. Yeah. Um so there you have it. Um yeah, there you have it though, man. So um I'm not sure if I'm going to be with so I'm not sure when I'll watch it but I will try to check it out when I get a chance though. So this is kind of interesting right here. Um the fact that they're going to go without Tia Maui. I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is, man. Um and speaking of it is what it is. Um, we need to talk about, um, hold on a second here. Um, yeah, we need to talk about Drake. All right. No, I'm not talking about the whole, the whole squashing the the ground beef of him and Kanye. I'm not going to do that story, man. Um, so. Drake Certified Lover Boy is expected to return to number one on the charts this week. Drake Certified Lover Boy is expected to spend its fifth week atop the Billboard 200's album chart, according to Hits Daily Double. The project is expected to sell 73,513 copies, um, a 12% decrease from last week when it was beat out by Young Thug's Punk. Yeah, no, I don't know if anybody listened to that shit though. In second will be country music star Morgan uh, Wallen. The, the dangerous with dangerous the double the double album. Doja Cat's Planet Planet Her <laughs> should come in at number three with forty one thousand two hundred ninety seven sales. Olivia Rodrigo Sour. And young boy never broke again. Um, sincerely, Cantrell will round out the top five with thirty-seven thousand eight hundred and fifty-six, and thirty-seven thousand seven hundred eighty-one, respectfully. Thugs on um, Punk is expected to fall all the way down to eighth with thirty-eight thousand eight hundred and ten units sold. A sixty-three um percent drop off. Certified Lover Boy original originally debuted at number one on the Billboard two hundred in September with a colossal six hundred thirteen thousand equivalent units sold. Since then, it's bounced in and out of first place on the charts. Drake recently put forth his new project for Album of the Year at the 2022 Grammys. Additionally, he submitted the track Why Too, Way Too Sexy um, for Best Rap Performance. Girls Want Girls for Best Melodic Rap Performance and No Friends in the Industry for the Best Rap Song. He opted not to submit for Record of the Year nor Song of the Year. Hmm... Okay, that's interesting. Um, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute here. 
Wait a minute here. I just did this one. Wait a minute here. Um, man, wait, I just did this one. Anyway, um, hang on a minute. Okay. Hold on a minute here. Okay. I think I'm going to actually, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up the show right now. Um, for those of you, hold on. Let me just uh, say this though. Hold on a second before I even say this. Okay, for those of you who are new listeners and new um YouTube watchers in the YouTube community universe, um, who don't know what's going on. We are live and direct on YouTube, on YouTube, StreamYard, and of course, Seventeen Live. That's the reason why you guys didn't see my face because I'm on Seventeen Live looking at comments. So I'm not saying I'm not paying attention to you guys. So don't don't you worry about that one right there. Um, I'll get to I'll get to this. Um. If you guys are new, if you guys like what you heard in today's episode or any previous episodes whatsoever, go show some love by making a charitable donation to my cash app, which is which is dollar sign G Money Stacks five fifty five. That's dollar sign capital G lowercase M O N E Y capital S lowercase T A C K Z five fifty five. Once again, it's not about break. It's not about breaking the bank, folks. It's all about um, whatever amount of money you decide to be comfortable donating. Any amount of money will be appreciated. All right, you don't have to have a lot of money to show support to somebody, especially um, a person like myself who has three shows. All right, now don't get discouraged. All right. Any amount that you choose to do will be appreciated. All right. I got you. And speaking of I got you, um, I will go over um the I will go over where you could actually um listen to the show. Um so before I even go to the streaming platforms on the go, I am going to actually um tell you where you can follow the show on social media. And for starters, you can follow Off The Meat Rat Chain's New York podcast on Facebook and Instagram, alongside with my other shows, which is Excellent Fun Vibrant Podcast, um, the Sports sports Edition show, and also um, my other podcast show, um, Meticulous Vibe Juice Podcast, and... And my primary handle on the gram, which is G Money Stacks 555 in Queens, New York. And also, don't forget to follow me on 17 Live at G Money Stacks Queens, New York. Um, I do apologize for the uh um for the random streamer who who joined the live stream. Um, that's pretty much why I had to actually stop what I was doing to actually interact with the with the streamer because I'm trying to trying to do um much as I can to interact with you guys and you know the people who are um watching me on 17 live and the streamers as well. Um and let's get to we're gonna get to um where you can actually look for the uh um podcast all right so so check this out um you can listen to the podcast on audio and visual streaming platforms 
And for starters, you can listen to Off the Meat Rat Chains New York podcast episodes on Podorama. We are on Anchor, Audacity, Spotify, Audio Burst, Deezer, TuneIn Plus Alexa Radio, um, Player FM, Podchaser, we're on Stitcher, Pocket Cast, Podcast Attic, Breaker, Castbox FM, Listen Notes, Pod Bay, Pod Friend. Don't forget to go to the two st- links of Pod Chaser and Pod Friend so you can leave a five star rating. Um, even though you don't have anything to say on there, um, a five star rating will be appreciated. Um, we are on a new streaming app called Pod. Pado Polo. Now, for those of you who may not know what Pado Polo is, I am going to do an, a separate episode in the future discussing this and and how um the people um uh, reached out to me earlier as I was on Instagram on the excellent fun vibrant podcast um show page. Um, I got an M, I got a DM in regards to the people from Pado Polo um, who actually reached out to me in regards to, you know, claiming the shows and stuff like that. So I actually got the account. I actually, um, you know, downloaded the app. Um, So I'd like to say thank you to the people from Pado Polo for reaching out to me and you guys can listen to the episodes on Pado Polo as well. All right. Thank you so much to the people in Pado Polo. Thank you. Okay, raw one. Raw one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um yeah, so Pado Polo is the new streaming app. And I already added a link to there so you could actually um so you could check that out for yourself. And we are on Reason FM. Um don't forget to listen to Off the Meat Rat Chains New York podcast episodes on Amazon Music. We are on Audible, we are on Google Podcasts iHeartRadio, the number one app for music, radio, and podcasts. And last but not least, the YouTube. Go grab the subscribe button on the YouTube channel page, G Money Stacks 555. Make sure you enable alerts alongside with the notification bell. Stay tuned for more video content, um, upcoming episodes, previous episodes. Um, leave a like and a comment along with the episodes with the topics that was discussed today and other previous episodes. Um, make sure you download your favorite episodes and share the video. Tell a friend to another friend and also make sure you share the podcast along with the audio streaming platforms with the link that says link tree slash g money stacks 555 make sure you share that link and it'll take you to the audio streaming platforms um so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode um let me just say this though i want to say a couple things um make sure you reach out to your loved ones like you you your wives your husbands um your boyfriends your girlfriends family friends um um those individuals might be all right on the outside but on the inside they are not you don't have to wait till um, mental health awareness month or mental health awareness day um like in may or or sometime this month or whatever to actually reach out 
because when you reach out to somebody by taking a risk to see what's going on on the inside of them, you're basically going to get rewarded by taking a risk. Um, for the simple fact that you cannot put a time frame on on when to reach out to somebody. There is no good time. There is no time frame to to do that. Um, you can just reach out um anytime they want. And and the reason why I bring up I bring up mental health, of course. Because earlier we talked about what Will Smith was going through, and and yes, it's it's challenging. It's a difficult challenge that he went through, and of course, um, like I said before, in regards to Will Smith, I hope he does his best to do what makes him happy, health wise, and in general, because. You may you, you may um think that oh because he's a celebrity and has a lot of money and all the other stuff is all is all good. No, it's not all good. The shit is not all fucking good. That's like your that's like your crazy, dangerous, um arrogant, ignorant shit to say. That's a that's an ignorant shit to say though, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, and the fact of the matter still remains that he's human. We are all human. We all go through things, all right? And, you know, take a lesson from what Will Smith is doing, all right, and what he's been through. And I hope you guys and the folks out there um, are able to relate to, to him, all right? Now, if you have a dream of being a podcaster and you would like to create a podcast show like I'm doing right now with three shows under my belt, um, you, I'm going to um, recommend um, some key important things that you need to start a podcast, all right? First and foremost, you need headphones. You need a microphone. You definitely need a laptop or computer, which which whichever item you have will actually work. By the way, um, when it comes to when it comes to um a microphone, right? It don't it doesn't have to be anything too expensive, all right? Um it could be it has it could be something simple like a Yeti microphone, or it could be one of the microphones that I'm using right now called Alvoxcon, which I which I ordered from um Target actually, not Amazon. Um and also um when it comes to creating a title name for the show. You want it to actually, you know, represent you. Not everything is going to make sense to people, okay? I used to feel that way when I started off the Meat Rat Change New York podcast last year, and I'm going to do a one-year anniversary episode um, real soon. Um, And, you know, I try to explain the meaning to a lot of people because – you know, some people some people will get it, and others and others won't. So, the fact of the matter is this, though, man. When you, whatever name of the podcast you come up with, you don't have to actually um, do too much. All you need to do is do what makes you happy. And, of course, I like to recommend, um, of course, you're going to need audio stream um, programs for your laptop or your computer, whatever whatever you're using. Um, 
of course, you're going to need like a software to do your live streams. Um, I don't use Zoom because I don't really use Zoom because it's because um like I previously said before, I didn't like the idea that um that when it comes to a group chat, you're only limited 40 minutes. I didn't like that at all. Because what happens if I want to interview somebody? They're gonna need more than 40 minutes. I need more than 40 minutes to interview somebody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like like that's crazy to me, man. <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, you um so yeah, um I recommend StreamYard um because um I was introduced to it and I've been hearing so much about it. Um and you know like what I like about it is you get to you get to um send links to people whoever you got emails and phone number of contacts to and and of course they when when they join when they try to join the chat that's when i'll add you to the live stream isn't that great so i recommend Streamyard, and of course um you guys know about anchor man i mean um I already, I already made a promo about it, so you guys probably are more than welcome to actually listen to it. So it's me giving you guidance on what to do. So with the creation tools, with how to edit, how to um, add music, intros, outros, um, of course, monetize distributions, um, to stream platforms, of course, um, if you like to start your own show of a podcast, you can go download the Anchor app, or you can go check out the Anchor website at anchor.fm so you can get yourself a head start, and I hope you guys have a, and I hope you guys have a um, a good time with your podcast journey and stuff. So, um, anyway, I will be bringing back the segment podcast juice of the week. I know I haven't touched on it for a very long time. Just been going through some changes and stuff like that, which I kind of hate, which I hate so much, but you know, sometimes, 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 change can be good sometimes it can be bad so um you know without further ado um i want to go over one more thing actually before i even log off and stuff man i'm gonna take a look at your comments on 17 live so i'm going to actually um so i'm gonna actually take myself off the screen like this and i'm gonna read the comments on 17 live all right here we go let's see who let's see who came in today um see who came in today um yeah this person is oh this person said hi oh hello hello there um what is it um artemis wait artemis planet thank you for stopping by um and who is this this is um amy sherry thank you for your snack um i got you with the poke um amy sherry let's see um who else who else came in your underscore Kuwait underscore mom sent the snack. Thank you so much for the snack. Appreciate you. Um, okay, I'm about to follow you right now. I'm about to follow you right now. Um, 
have to follow you and stuff. Um, Autumn Dion, I'm not sure um uh, what your question is, but um, whatever question you have, um, whatever question you have, let me um. You can just shoot it in the comments. Um, you know what I mean. So whoever whoever came in, um, whatever I don't know what your question was, but um, let me just um, let me just say this though, man. Um, I appreciate every single person who jumped into the live stream of the recording of Off the Meat Rat Chains New York podcast episode eighty six. I appreciate every single one of you. Let me just get back on the screen real quick. Okay. As I said before, um, I do appreciate every single one of you who actually um, tuned in to the live stream of this episode 86. And I do appreciate every single one of you, especially the ones in 17 Live on my um, live stream, which is where I'm recording. And, and I really hope you guys stay safe. Um, I really um, hope you guys, um, you know, wash your hands with your, with your hand sanitizer, soap and water. I hope you guys have, make sure you have your water and your electrolytes because you're going to need strength and energy. Um, Make sure you don't let nobody give you a hard time or whatever. Whoever give you a hard time, screw them. They're, they're just jealous of you and your success, man. And, of course, of course, you know, there's two things that's therapeutic to me. Smiling and laughter. Because we all need it for our mental health. And that's the most important thing to our lives right here we need this so um anyway man um let me just say let me just say thank you to every single one of you who actually um jo joined the live stream thank you to everybody who tuned in and just actually um took a chance on me when no one else would um and yeah so so thank you very much to every single one of you who who's been tuning in rocking with me on this show right here and you know stay tuned for more more topics more episodes to come and i'll see you next time on an, on the next episode um one love Peace out and have a good night.